Sutta said, O Brahmanas, when Vishnu vanished, the excellent sage Narada roamed over the earth, seeing Shiva Lingas in the various holy centers with piety. In the course of his wanderings over the earth, O Brahmanas, with his mind full of devotional pleasure, he saw many forms of Shiva that confer worldly pleasures and salvation on the devotees. On knowing that Narada of Divine Vision was wandering over the earth, the two attendants of Shiva approached him, who by that time had become pure in mind. They bowed to him and touched his feet. With a desire to secure release from the curse, they spoke to him respectfully. The attendants of Shiva said, O celestial sage, son of Brahma, please hear our words. We who formerly offended you are really not Brahmanas. O Brahminical sage, we, your former offenders, are attendants of Shiva. Induced by Shiva, you had cursed us when your mind was deluded by the illusory infatuation for the princess at the Svayangvara. Realizing that the occasion was inopportune, we kept quiet then. We reaped the fruit of our own action. No one is to be blamed for it. O oh Lord, be pleased. Bless us now. Sutta said, On hearing the words of the attendants uttered with devotion and respect, the sage replied lovingly, repenting for his previous fury. Narada said, O oh, attendants of Lord Shiva, most worthy of the respect of good people. Please listen to my words, now free from delusion. They are true and shall make you happy. Formerly my mind had been depraved. Certainly it was Shiva's will. In that state of delusion and crookedness of the mind, I had unfortunately cursed both of you. What I have said is bound to happen. Still, O Ganas, attendants, listen. I shall tell you the way of redemption from the curse. Please forgive my sin now. You will be born as demons from the virile semen of a great sage, and due to his power you will secure the commanding position of the king of demons, endowed with prosperity, strength, and valorous exploits. You will rule over the whole universe as devotees of Shiva, with your senses conquered. You will gain your former position after courting death at the hands of a manifestation of Shiva. Sutta said, On hearing these words of the noble-souled Narada, the two attendants of Shiva became delighted and went back to their abode joyfully. Narada too was delighted. Meditating exclusively on Shiva, he continued his wanderings over the earth, seeing the various holy centers of Shiva personally. Reaching Kashi, that excelled all other cities in holiness, which is a favorite resort of Shiva, which easily bestows the favor of Shiva, and which is identical with Shiva, the sage became contented. He saw Shiva, the lord of Kashi, and worshipped him with very great pleasure and love. While staying at Kashi, the excellent sage became contented. He bowed to the Lord, described his glory piously, and remembered him with the flutter of love. Narada then went to the region of Brahma, his mind being highly purified by remembering Shiva. He was eager to know further the principles of Shiva. There he bowed to Brahma with devotion and eulogized him with various prayers. With his mind riveted to Shiva, he asked him the good principles of Shiva. Narada said, O Brahma, knower of the form of Brahman, O Pitamaha, the Lord of the universe, by your grace I have heard the greatness of Vishnu entirely, and also the path of devotion, of knowledge, of austere penance, of charitable gifts, and of holy centers but I have not understood the principle of Shiva. Hence, O Lord, please explain the rules of his worship and also the various activities of the Lord. O dear sage, 
How can Shiva, who is free from attributes, become full of attributes? Since I am deluded by Shiva's maya, I do not know the principle of Shiva. How did Shiva remain in his pure form before creation? In the middle of creation, how does he sport about? At the time of dissolution, how does he remain? How is he, the benefactor of the world, propitiated? O Brahma, when propitiated, what benefit does he bestow on his devotees and on others? Please satisfy me on all these enquiries. I have heard that the Lord becomes delighted immediately. The merciful great God cannot bear the stress and strain of his devotees. The three deities, Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesha, are born as parts of Shiva. Mahesha, having all the parts of Shiva, is Shiva himself. Please tell me all about his manifestation and especially his exploits. O Lord, please narrate the manifestation of Uma and her marriage, their domestic life, especially their great divine sports and other things which are worthy of mention should be narrated to me, O sinless one. Parvati's birth and her marriage, as well as Guha's birth, shall be narrated in detail, O Lord of the people. O Lord of the universe, this I have heard from many before, but I am not satisfied. Hence I have sought refuge in you. Please have mercy on me. On hearing these words of Narada, his own son, Brahma, the grandfather of the world, said this.